Hi, I'm Bill Galway, and today we're going to talk about the pediatric knee attachment. I have here the right knee attachment, and it looks a little bit different than the adult knee attachment, and I'll show you that now because you'll have both attachments. And you can see that the adult knee attachment is, of course, much larger than the pediatric knee attachment. So it's not too hard uh, to not confuse these two devices. And the one device, or the one attachment, you can get confused with the pediatric knee attachment is the hip attachment. Because it's kind of, you've got a short input tube, and it does swivel much like the pediatric attachment swivels. So the way to differentiate these two is to look at the pediatric attachment, and you'll find out that it only swivels about so far before it stops. The hip attachment swivels all the way around so you can do both left and right hips. The other thing you'll see on here, it'll show you here's a label and it'll have a knee on here. This uh, person is holding up his right hand and there's a diagram of the knee so we know this is for knee range of motion as opposed to hip range of motion. The range of motion stops are quite different on a pediatric attachment compared to the adult hip attachment. That's another thing that you'll notice. And what that makes for is kind of an awkward looking placement on the device when we're going to go ahead and use it. And that's where some of the confusion lies. Now we're going to take the pediatric attachment and attach it to the dynamometer. And one thing I think you have to pay attention to is where the dot is on the dynamometer shaft. And it has to line up with the dot on the attachment. And you'll see when you put it on that the range of motion stops kind of look different than what you're used to when you're using a regular adult attachment. So we'll take our right side and the dot here, line it up with the dot on the shaft, and attach the knee attachment, and if we pan down to the bottom a little bit, the first thing you'll notice is that it doesn't look like the attachment goes all the way down to 90 degrees. And in fact it doesn't, but we're not worried about where the attachment goes, we're worried about where the patient is positioned. And since the pad will be in front, as opposed to the adult attachment where the pad is behind, uh, the subject's knee will definitely get to 90 degrees. Now as we move into full extension, you'll think that why that's way too much range of motion in an extension. There has to be something uh, amiss here. But again, we're not worried about the placement of the attachment in space. We're worried about where the subject's knee is going to be. And with the pad on the front, you'll see that the, the, the patient goes to about zero or maybe minus five when we put the patient in. So while it looks awkward while it's on the device, and it may be confusing, this is really the way it's designed to work, and you'll see better when we put our subject into the, into the machine. Okay, now we're going to introduce the subject to the dynamometer, and you'll see this young man right here come into the frame and we're going to align his axis of rotation with the axis of rotation of the machine. He's a little bit low, so I'll raise his chair just a little bit. And you can see Michael fits nicely uh, on the seat. And you may need a foam pad or two for some of the smaller folks. Right. The next thing I'm going to do is take Mike and put him in. And now that Michael's in here and the pad is about an inch or two above the lateral malleolus, uh, he should be comfortable. Axis of uh, rotation is good, has his quad strap on, and I have him strapped down at the waist. I'm going to take my hold off and release him so that I can set our range of motion. Okay, I'm going to bring Michael up into extension. And now you can see Michael's getting into full extension. We could take him into recurve autumn if we wanted to, but I think you get the perspective that the attachment brings him to the proper range of motion. So I will set his away range of motion, and I'll bring him into flexion. 
and you saw that when we had the attachment on without the subject in, it looked like the knee would not get to 90 degrees, but in fact, we had the subject a little past 90 degrees. And I'll set his toward range of motion. I'll tell the machine where it is in space by using our anatomical reference. And I can put it into isokinetic mode. Okay, sir, just kick up into my hand, kick my hand. Good, and pull all the way down. And kick up again. Good job, and pull all the way down. And I think even though the attachment looks unusual when we first set it up, you can see that the subject has proper range of motion, about zero to about 95 degrees. Okay, that's it for the introduction to the pediatric knee attachment. Hello well, again, we're going to go over the pediatric shoulder attachment. You can see that the input tube is a lot smaller than the adult input attachment for the long shoulder, and the adult attachment is also curved. This is a little bit, has a little bit of a bend in it uh, on the pediatric attachment. And it's much smaller, so it's more difficult to get these confused, unlike uh, the pediatric knee. So we're just going to go ahead and attach shoulder attachment to the machine and we're going to set our subject up, up for flexion extension of the shoulder and in this case we've chosen to lay the subject down on the table. Uh, the other thing I want you to see about the pediatric shoulder attachment, which is the same for the adult, is that we have a spring-loaded handle here. And this is good just in case you're a little bit off with your axis of rotation and also keeping in mind that the scapula does move about quite a bit, changing the axis of rotation. That's why we have this spring-loaded handle available. Now, to get the patient in, in place, all we have to do is step on the foot plate and bring the subject over. Go ahead, sir, and reach up and grab a hold of that. You can see we're in a pretty nice position here. If I ask him to straighten his elbow out and turn his hand up, things look pretty good. So at this, at this time, we're going to go ahead and give the subject a little bit of range of motion. I'll clear li my limits. And always remember, when you have an attachment that can be affected by gravity, you want to have one hand on it because you don't want it to get away from you. That scares patients. So I'll clear li my limits, and I'll bring him down into uh, sh shoulder extension. And I'll hit my hold button to hold the subject there. I'll set my toward limit, and I'll bring him back up into forward flexion. Let's keep your elbow straight, buddy. Good, and we'll hold it right there. And I'll set that. My anatomical reference, in this case, if I want to set it here, is 90 degrees, and I calibrate my position, and then I continue. I can then put it into isokinetic mode, and hit start, and Michael, go ahead and lift up and all the way down. Good. Keep that elbow straight. All the way up and all the way down. Good. Keep your elbow straight. All the way up and then all the way down. Okay, so there's a short look at the pediatric shoulder attachment.